She's a welfare officer. So if any of you have got any problems, you just arrange to go and see her. What sort of problem? We've got lots, eh, girls? Problems outside and to do with the outside. Visitors, families, employment, accommodation. I must have flown here. Our new fairy godmother. Mommy! Mommy! I thought you'd be asleep. Off you go now. Shut your eyes. Well, come on, you lot, pack up. It's time to go. Well, come on, move. Excuse me. Are you in charge here? That's right. I'm Hazel Crow, the union rep in this factory. Oh. Did you know that these women are taking my girls' jobs? Now, some of my girls have got kids to feed. Get that lot on the bus, will you? I'll only be a minute. We're doing government work here, making uniforms. Now, have you have any evidence? I just that... saw Andrew Reynolds walking out of here with an armful of skirts. You reckon that's not evidence? Would you be prepared to swear to that? If I had to. Well, then I'll see the matter's taken further. I think you should do that, Mrs. Bennett. Miss Bennett. I think you'd better do that, Miss Bennett. If it's not straightened out within two days, we're going on strike. Well, it may take more than two days. You can't quote me as saying this. But a strike would make sure the department got the message. Very bad publicity. And I happen to believe that the proper place for prisoners is in prison. It's nice to know we've got a friend on the other side. We do mean business. I hope you do, Mrs. Crow. I hope you do. <sighs> Mr. Reynolds? The girls are worried about what's going on, and as shop steward, it's up to me to find out. It's got nothing to do with union elections. But a victory over management would ensure your re-election, wouldn't it, Hazel? Let's not get sidetracked, Mr. Reynolds. I'm here to get answers for my members. Well, why discuss it out here? Why not go into the office? Neutral ground. I see. 
Well, frankly, we need this government contract, and we need the prison labor. It's the only thing keeping us solvent at the moment. All I can do is give you my assurance that there will be no layoffs, providing you and your members cooperate and leave the prison staff alone. I want just a little bit more than your assurance, Mr. Reynolds. I want a written guarantee that there'll be no layoffs, that all work other than the government job is done by my members, even if it does mean going into overtime. And I want a regular staff member to police the uh, prison labour to make sure that these conditions are met. That's a very costly settlement you're proposing. But even more costly if you reject it. So far, your record in industrial relations is very good. Never had a strike, have you? Well, that could change. You knock me back on this and I'll have everyone here out on strike in no time flat. And how long do you reckon you could last before you went to the wall? A month, a week, a couple of days, maybe? Are you prepared to sacrifice all your jobs over this? Question is, Mr. Reynolds, are you prepared to sacrifice your entire operation over this? No. Excuse me to take the senior sergeant, Cameron. There's a lady here to see you. Uh, what does she want, Baker? Oh, she just asked to see you, sir. Her name is uh, Mrs. Barbara Wallace. I had to come, Vic. Pray to do you. Sit down. I didn't know until I read the paper today that you were involved. I should have known. I was going to call you, but... I understand. insurance company now in Kenmore. I know. I'm glad you stopped him, Vic. Stopped him from batting any more little boys. I only wish I could. Oh, don't, Vic. There's no point. I've learned that. I go out to Polly's grave sometimes. I know. I've seen you there. You've been there and you didn't. I couldn't, Vic. How's Kate? She's growing up too fast. Uh, she's a boarding school now. Does she like it? Well, she grumbles a lot, but we come to a mutual understanding that it's the best place for her. <laughs> You're a good father, Vic. You were a good father to Bobby, too. I wanted you to know that. Thanks for some great memories. This part of the day I enjoy. Yes. Oh, no, don't say we're out of tea bags. Oh, I think there's some more in that cupboard over there. I was wondering, I've got something important on tonight. Would you mind swapping shifts? Swap? No, I'd rather not. But I wouldn't mind taking over your shift, you know, do a double. I could use the overtime. Well, that suits me. It would mean I wouldn't have to come back here. Hmm. Do you want more coffee? No, thanks. But thanks for the shift. Beautiful thing in the whole world. Yes, Nathan, sir. there's a visitor for you. Oh, funny. I wasn't expecting no one. Who is it? I don't know. A man. Oh, it's a good start. <laughs> Can you look after it for me, Tor? Yeah, no worries. I'm off on a blind date. See ya. Bye. We've all heard Gaffney claiming that she's made a tape that could incriminate an officer. Now, I think we need to move on it and move on it quickly. So first up this morning, I want a thorough cell search. Do you really think there is a tape? That's not the point. It indicates the way the women are thinking. Now, I want all tapes and tape recorders confiscated. How thorough do you want the search? Very. I don't want to miss a thing. And no showers for the women until we've completely searched each block. All right? Let's go. rung the bell. Who cares? Hey, B, what's going on? I don't know. Maybe they all decided to stay home. Oh. Do you think you could keep it down to a dull roar? Headache. Hmm. Hmm. What's happening? It's nearly Christmas time! Oh, Barbara! Oh, 
God, I'm not. Burns and bright outside for body too. Oh, she's not well. Looks all right to me. Now move. For what for? Against the wall. I said get over there. Oh, take it easy, will ya? Hard uh, night burns. Oh. Brian, where's your tape recorder? My what? Your tape recorder. Oh, I left that to be. Hey, Bo, you got my tape recorder, haven't you? Yeah, I've got it. All right, you two, back inside. So what's so special about my tape? Should the second person in two days be interested in it? They're confiscated. Oh, I'm really? Lie down. What's that in aid of? You know better than that. Come on, I got a right to know. New policy, no tapes, no recorders. Since when? Since now. Uh, Miss Bennett, what is it? Well, some things of mine have gone missing from my locker in the staff room. My handbag and transistor. Are you sure? Well, they were there this morning when I came on duty. Uh, do you, should I report it to Mrs. Davidson? I'm in charge at the moment. Well, what should we do? Oh, Mr. Harrison, yeah. get the women from the laundry and take them to H block. There should be a cell search. Oh, I don't yes, want to make any fuss. It's all right, Miss Bailey. A cell search is in order. How long's this going on for? Administration here is lax to the point of negligence. Discipline is lacking among the staff, and officers of lesser rank are often insubordinate to their superiors. The liberal attitude that is endorsed by the administration, combined with an acute staff shortage, opens up potential for escape that presents a danger to the whole community. Of course, the department is absolutely furious about this letter. Well, it does seem very detailed. Exactly. Mr. Douglas thinks it was written by someone within the prison. To me, that is quite obvious. The minister, of course, is demanding an explanation both of the letter and its contents, and security is also going to be tightened. Now, do either of you have any idea who wrote it? No, Mrs. Davidson. You don't think it could have been one of the officers? It's quite possible. Well, surely it's more likely to have been one of the women. There's always someone with a grudge who would want to. Granted. But it's only a member of staff that could have known the contents in that letter. Well, I, I don't know anything about it. I'm not suggesting you do. And I'm going to ask the others the same thing. I shall also tell them that if the culprit turns out to be an officer, it will mean instant dismissal. I shall also have a word with the women. No doubt they will have read the paper by now, and it is not going to help discipline. Well, if it was one of the women, uh, we might hear something if we keep our ears open. Perhaps. And that will be all. Oh, B. Smith has returned from the hospital. Would you take her through to Sister Franklin, please? Yes, Mrs. Davidson. And then go to the recreation room. I want you there when I speak to the women. You haven't forgotten about Byrne's picture. As a matter of fact, I had. I'll talk to the women first and then leave them to the unveiling. At the moment, I am in no mood for niceties. The point is that this is a women's prison, and yet the department are insisting on male and female patrol groups. But why? I mean, it sounds like they don't think we can handle it. Precisely. I also think they're trying to blame us for the riot. Why would they do that? Well, it all started because of their new security measures. But they'd never admit to it, so they have to try and put the blame somewhere. Typical male attitude. I also think there's going to be more trouble. And now, I don't think Steve will forget his first day here. Well, it was during the riot that the women protested very strongly against male supervision in the shower block. And I don't blame them. But if this new system is implemented, it's going to happen all the time. Well, I don't want to be around when that happens. Well, you may not be, which brings me to my next point. In its wisdom, the department has decided not to give us any additional staff, but a replacement staff. I don't follow you. For every male officer that we get, we lose one female officer. Oh, you must be joking. Does that mean that we all get the sack? Well, it's the next best thing. You'll be offered postings in one of the low-security prisons. Well, I suppose I'm putting my foot in it again, but what's wrong with that? Well, the low-security prisons are always in the country. Now, what about our families? Are we expected to sell up our homes and move to the country? Well, I think I've heard enough. If the department won't listen to reason, well, we'll have to strike. Well, look at you all dressed up. Off for a night on the town? No, I'm just going to have a drink at the arms with a friend. Uh-huh. Tall, dark and handsome? No. 
She's blonde, plump and middle-aged and works for social welfare. Can't win them all. Well, think of me slogging up and down the corridors all night. Ah, here's another one getting away from it all. Roll on, 8 a.m. Do without this after a double night shift. Why, what's wrong? Kent, she was damned insolent when I told her to go for a shower, so I'm putting her on report now. Sue, she's not handling things too well at the moment. Let me sort it out. You're welcome. And don't put her on report, please. All right, you sort her out. And what Meg said to her, but it did the trick. No, we seem to have cheered her up at all. That's not surprising. Keep an eye on her, though. Oh, that shifts. Don't suit me. Outside duty? Just on my way. Good. I'll leave Susie with you then. She's been reassigned to garden duties. Oh? It's been okay by Mrs. Davidson. Oh, well, I guess it must be all right then. Come on, Susie. Fresh air, isn't it, Miss Don't panic, ladies. Just get your children and get out. Well, don't bother about that, Nicholson. Just get your baby out. Me, this is Dave's message. I come from Smith and Lawson to the hospital. Right. Have you heard? They found Joan. Hello? Oh, she must be. They're sending another ambulance for her. Miss Nichols. Now you see, madam, with the shorter hem and the adjustment to the sleeves and the little bit out of the back and the, the shoulders altered and the buttons across moved in the front. Oh, it'll fit you like a glove. Wouldn't it be easier if you got one in my size? It's an unrepeatable offer. Yeah, from last year's stock. That's what you get now, if Madam will go into the fitting room and take the garment off, we'll send it off for alteration. Oh, when will it be back? Oh, much less than a month. And I'll, uh, I'll put the five dollars alteration fee on the bill. Five dollars? You have to go to Albury. We have all of our alterations done in Albury, Madam. I mean, if we had them done in Melbourne, you wouldn't know who was handling the garment, would you? Now, through there, Madam. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just want you to know, Sergeant, that whatever you and your men may think, my husband is not a criminal. Look, I understand your sentiments entirely, Mrs. Logan, but we've got a job to do. It's not up to us to say whether he's guilty or not. But you haven't answered my question. I want to know, I have a right to know what's going to happen to him and how long you're going to keep him here. Well, it was difficult to say at this stage. The best I can do to help, I have seen the detective Georgia, if you'll be able to help. How did you know I was here? Well, Joe rang. He told me about the trouble at the factory. I might have known. I should have told him not to ring. I knew you'd only worry. What happens now? Can you come home? Uh, not yet, I'm afraid, Mrs. Logan. They, uh, they just want to ask me a few questions. Now, but it'll all be over soon. I'll tell you all about it when I get home. I'm afraid we'll have to go, Mr. Logan. Sure, thank you. Now what happens? Well, that depends on the outcome of the interview. Is he being charged? Well, look, I really couldn't say at this stage. Is there someone I can go to for help at this stage? Oh, do you mean some sort of legal assistance? Yes. I might be able to help you there, madam, yes. How do you do, Mrs. Logan? My name's Kate McGrath. Please, sit down. Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Well, the... It's my husband, actually. He's in... He's being detained by the police, and no one will tell me what's going on. 
I just want to know when he'll be able to come home. He can't afford to be off work, not even for a day. Which police station? A Riverside. Ah, uh, who have you spoken to there? Oh, the sergeant at the desk, O'Malley or something. O'Reilly? Yes, that's it, I think. Do you know him? I've spoken to him once or twice. Actually, he's not a bad old stick once you get to know him. Oh. Well, there's something else I think I should mention now. And what's that? My husband invested our life savings and shares in the factory he worked for. We need the money desperately now. Our, our daughter's in hospital, you see. And the company won't buy the shares back. Would you be able to do anything about that? We'll do our level best on both counts. Now, let's take them one at a time. Why are the police holding your husband? Well, they think he robbed a payroll. Happy now? Yes. I dare say Mr. Logan feels a bit better about it, too. You all right, love? Oh, I'm all right. How about you? No, I think we've got everything sorted out now. Well, I hope you realize, Mr. Logan, we haven't solved this case. We might have to ask you a few more questions. I'll have to advise you not to go anywhere where we can't reach you. Hardly likely, Detective Shannon. Mr. and Mrs. Logan have a little girl here in hospital, seriously ill. Thank you very much for all your help. I don't know what I would have done. It's no trouble. Uh, don't forget you and your husband have to come and see me about that other matter. Well, what's that? I'll tell you about it when we get home. Bye. Something wake you? Helen. Now, Helen, we've just got to try and maintain some control. Of Don't us. talk to me about control. I want to run away from here and never stop screaming. to meet you. You poor child. Such a dreadful experience. Tragic. Well, I mustn't stay. I do hope the dress is... So glad to have made your acquaintance. Kind woman. Good of her to help. Means well. Everyone does. say you'll be well enough to travel soon so I've written to your Aunt Hester to say we'll delay a while in Melbourne. After all, we want you completely fit. We'll leave for a chuka in about a week. Oh, your Tom's a celebrity. Fund raised for hero of Loch Tay disaster. Yes. I'm so glad. Good. Well, call in again tomorrow. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. Uh, 
for adoption agencies taking so long to apply? Oh, that. Yeah. They did reply, didn't they? Another dead end, I'd expect them. Didn't have to hide the letter, though. I can take it by now. Have a sandwich. Molly, it's, it's always the same thing, though. In 10, 15 years of the same darn thing. Yours. Get upset, so I just, just put it away. Oh, I'm not going to get upset anymore. Oh. Must be lots of people like us, Ross. Waiting years and years for a child. Then when it finally happens... Yeah, but I don't think there's a blasted case left we can ask. Does it matter? <sighs> don't have to ask anyone. Anymore. What? You mean we're, we're giving up? Or, or do you mean... Bonnie? I am pregnant. <laughs> My God! <laughs> You little trooper! <laughs> you sure? This time, are you sure? Well, as sure as I can be. I haven't seen Dr. Elliot yet, but... This time, I really know I am. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, love. It's about time. <laughs> Come on in, Mr. McLean. Oh, Shirley, sure, put the results of that pregnancy test in. Yes, that's right, Carol. Thank you. Oh, uh, Cheryl, stand by me. McLean. It was negative, wasn't it? I'm afraid so. What you thought was pregnancy was, in fact, just a change of hormones, which can happen with endometriosis. But your, my period stopped. I'm afraid that's true. I would say quite categorically. It's just not possible. I'm sorry. Sure, can you come in now, please? Yvonne, I want to get you into hospital as soon as possible. For a laparotomy. Just a little cut in the tongue. We've discussed it before, and it's time to get rid of those problems once and for all. There's practically nil danger of malignancy, but we must rule it out. And you might, you might have to have a hysterectomy. I'll get us some coffee. You went through this, didn't you? And I let you. That wasn't quite the same, Yvonne. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> you really had to let it go. <laughs> I've washed my hands of her. Some people would say I was callous, but I say parents have a right to live too. We put up with the coming home all hours of the night. We put up with these so-called friends, great unwashed junkies, God knows what. Finally, I told her to go, and she did. Mrs. Sharp, your daughter has been living with a couple of young boys in a squat. They've disappeared. Now she may be in serious trouble. She may be in danger. Do you have any idea where we might find her? 
What has she done, Mr. Anderson? We don't know yet. If she gets in touch with you, contact us straight away. Understood? Yes. Thank you. I'll find my own way out. You will let us know if this... We will, Mrs. Sharp. We will. Your uncle has the car outside. You don't want any repeats of yesterday's performance, do you? No, Uncle. Can I thank your mistress for looking after my niece? Yes, sir. Possessed you. I just wanted him finished. Better to live with the shame. Now this terrible thing affects the whole family. It can't be undone. None of it. This is Carson. This is my sister, Beryl Cross. Are you going to take the case? Yes, I am. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Seems hopeless to me. I mean, everyone saw it happen. Including myself. But in this situation, the cause, not the consequence, is all important. My sister's always been impetuous. I must remember not to call you as a character witness. Now, if you don't mind, I need some time with my client. I'm authorising a phone call for Wells, Mr. Dobson. Oh, right you are. You've all been so helpful while I've been here. I really appreciate it. <laughs> That's no trouble, Miss Wells. You're entitled to a phone call. Now, double one seven four nine three six, right? My goodness, what a memory. <laughs> I suppose I'll have to listen to your radio programme now that I've met you. <laughs> Good idea. There we are. It's ringing. Take Thanks. your time. The phones aren't busy. Mr. Dobson, I'm sorry to hear the singing group collapsed. Some of these women have no gratitude, have they? Don't you believe it? According to the grave file, it's still a go-up. Take more than that to upset us. <laughs> That's good. Camilla Wells here. Punch me straight through the air, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep that job, put me through. So, if she's not the cat, what down, is Wells. she doing here? Well, Oops, time. I can't finish the She is darlings. sorry, I'm giving a blow-by-blow blow account of the Moe McGuire story. I trusted you, Wells. I'm sorry, Miss Bailey. Like I said, you've all been so helpful. Back to the laundry, is it? I was only following orders, Mrs. Reynolds. We were told that she yes, was allowed... Yes, I know, and the department accepts that. But you should have monitored the call more closely. Will that be in your report? Oh, I'm not looking for scapegoats, Sue. I just want to make sure this sort of thing doesn't happen again. I take it the phone call was effective. You could say that. Half the phones in Parliament House are running hot. The story's been picked up by every other radio station in town, and now there's pressure on the minister to make a public statement on television. So the department's come up with a solution. They're going to release Maguire? No, they're going to release Camilla Wells. She still has half her sentence to serve. Doesn't matter. They want her out of here. Now, I know how some of you are going to feel about the injustice of this situation, especially since Maguire is still here. But we must do as the department directs, whether we like it or not. Thank you, ladies. Yes, but under normal circumstances, the whole thing would have gone unnoticed. In fact, Mitchell would have been on a charge. Thanks, Sue. I appreciate your kind words. But this wasn't normal. Bobby Mitchell was pregnant and I treated her like, well, one of the lads. Yes, what's the matter? I've just heard about Bobby. I want you to know how sorry. No, I don't, Dennis! Let go! Let go! Let go! I'll get help. You murderer! Parker's gone mad. I need help. Let's lock her in her cell. She'll get over it. No, Joan. She's killing Dennis. I mean it. She's gone stark staring mad. Where are they? Oh, cell block. Security gates. I call an ambulance, tell them what's happened, and then phone the governor. Oh, no, but you just look, can't... Just hurry. I'll look after it. He's not there. Well, just hang on a minute, will you? Yes, I heard. Find out when he'll be back, would you? Could you tell us when he'll be back? Oh, Pat, I'm sorry. I got caught up here. How's Mitchell? Oh, well, please. she's under sedation. No, anywhere. Mason's I'll all right. Oh, Mrs. Barry, she won't get Bobby. Back to you. Well, there's no chance the women won't find out you. now, is there? Do you just have to wait. Thanks wear. very much. Oh, well, what chance we can do? The Wiseman's out of town till the end of next week. Oh, thanks, Sue. Now what? I think that girl needs to talk to someone, don't you? There must be someone we can call. The only person I can think of is Phil Cleary's friend, Chris Sutton. He's a psychologist. Do you think he'd come? 
Oh, it's a very bad time. He and Phil were close, but at least we can try. Oh, and Pat, tell Ray Proctor I want to talk to him after lunch, would you? All right. Where are you two going? Oh, it's the exercise period, miss. Miss Davis is supervising exercise. Stay there until she's finished what she's doing. So, well, hurry up, then. Pardon? Oh, we're just dying for some exercise, Mrs Bailey. You'll just wait until Miss Davis is ready. When you let those two out in solitary, make sure they understand I meant what I said yesterday. Will do. Yesterday's logs, Governor, and this morning's into office mail. Anything to go back to reception? Mountains of pride. Those over there on the desk and up there on the cabinet. Oh, good. At last, this should be the list of trainee officers we're expecting. Could do with a few extra bodies. They're usually more of a hindrance for that first week until they find their feet. Anything else? Uh, no, that's excellent, thank you. Hello, not like you to be late. Couldn't get a cab. Well, Joyce tried calling you, but your phone was disconnected. Yes, I've reported it. Is anything wrong? Why should there be? Well, I mean, it's unusual for you to be late, and I don't think I've ever known you to arrive out of uniform. I just thought something might be... What? Well, wrong. Huh? I could start your rounds for you while you're changing, if you like. I'll do the rounds myself, thank you. Yes, I'll tell her you called. Of course not. No trouble at all. On the Western Front. Good. Listen, I know what's up with Joan. Uh, sorry? Joan. Why she had to get that new uniform? Oh, why? A friend of hers just rang and he said her house has burnt down. <laughs> You're joking. That's what he said. When? Tonight, just before she came here. Oh, it must be some sort of practical joke. Didn't sound like it. She wouldn't be here if her house had burnt down. Well, she did seem pretty uptight. Has she said anything? Oh, the guy sounded genuine. He's worried about how she's going and thinks she should be resting. I agree. I mean, if it is true, she must be feeling terrible. Where is she? On rounds. Well, didn't see her, but if it is true, I'll go and find her. We can always cover for her, can't we? Fine. since I rode into town, all I've been hearing about is the heartache and the heartbreaks and the hard times. But look at us all here, dry martinis, vintage claret, good music, a wonderful five-course meal, and everybody singing and laughing and toasting the outback. I mean, is it any wonder a girl's confused? Well, blame me. Ben, yeah, don't get upset. Blame me. You know what? Of course, like a lot of other farmers, I'm a bloody muck. Fern? People like you from the towns will never understand us. And it's our own fault. You always see us like this. Sitting around at the end of the day, having a few drinks, best of everything, no worries. That's enough, Fern. And there's visitors. Mugs like us feel we've got to turn it on. Best grog, best everything. Don't stint. And then they go away. And they tell everyone. Take no notice of the bloody farmer. He's never had it so good. Please, They'd Vern. never see us in the heat of a day stuck out there trying to fix a windmill in a dust storm or covered in dirt and muck. They don't know you get out of bed at 4.30 in the morning and fall down in a heap at sundown and... Uh, you worry your guts out now. You're going to look after your wife and kids. Look, I... So just don't talk to me about vintage bloody claret. I'm sorry. I really am very sorry. But, uh, from what you just said, you must be real happy about Mom's decision. Yes. What decision? Lunch will be ready in a minute. Where's your sister? Well, go fetch her. Skipping breakfast is one thing. She's not going to start missing lunches, too. Why should I have to be the one who... Lucy, call Diana, please. Mum, go and get her. 
Lucy, what's wrong with you? Where is she? She's gone. Doug. What? Gone where? I don't know. Lucy! Well, they're not coming back. They're getting married. Bloody little fool. They have to. She thinks they're going to have a baby. So we're going to see Dr. Callaghan. If she is, they're getting married straight away. Vern! What are you going to do? He's not going to get away with it. I'm going to radio Callaghan. No, Vern. The whole district will hear that call. I don't want that. I direct that the child, Jennifer Gray, be returned to the care and control of her mother, Mrs. Carol Gray. With the proviso that there be no contact whatsoever between the child and Lindsay Fenton. What? Jennifer, I believe it's for the best. Who been all afternoon? I thought you had a meeting after school. It was cancelled. Where were you? I was listening to records. Who with? Mum, I wasn't doing anything wrong. I only listened to discs. We had an agreement that you would always tell your father and me where you were. That's all I'm asking. I was over at Betty's. Betty Regan? Yeah. And that's where you've been since you left school? Yeah. I phoned Betty over an hour ago. She didn't know where you were. Hello? Are you sure you won't come with us? Yeah, I'm sure. Have a good time. Mm. They hang up? Well, it's important they'll obviously ring back. Oh, it's probably one of those young idiots from school. I wouldn't mind if what they do is funny, but it's sordid. Should have seen the magazine I confiscated on Friday. Headmaster's too tolerant for some of those kids. Well, I'll make an issue of it. Tell him. Oh, I've told him. Thinks I'm too tough. Old-fashioned. Like to see him control that class of mine. It's all right for him sitting at his big desk. Yeah. By the way, have you made a decision about Margaret yet? Oh, yes. Let's take her to lunch. Forbega hardly ever gets invited out. Well, do you mind if I don't come today, Mum? Well, you know how your Aunt Margaret loves to see you. I just don't feel up to going out today. What's the matter? Don't you feel well? I'm all right. I just feel like a day by myself. It's obviously very funny. Can we share the joke? No. No? Let's hear it, Eddie. It's just some crazy stuff, Mrs. Taylor. Just some stuff we did together over the weekend. Sounds fascinating. Play it. Perhaps you realise just how unfunny your smutty humour is. Get ready to laugh, everyone. I don't want to play the tape, Mrs. Taylor. Do as you're told. Oh, Scott, don't be like that. I'm the school rapist. This is what you brought me here for, isn't it? Sex. Sure. How much was it again? Ten dollars. I went to see a doctor to go on the pill. Stop it. Switch it off. stealing your thunder after what you and Bill have been through. In fact, don't be surprised if he doesn't leave here quite as soon as he expects. I read it. They wouldn't have wrecked his plane. Just delayed him. I know, but Bill all over. So bloody British. It's called playing the game. Mm. Doing the right thing. Oh, that rot. Very Bill Lancaster. What's going to happen to you two when this is over? 
I'm going to marry him. Have his children. You? And all that domesticity? I hope so, Alice. I really do. What time is your train? 2.30. Do you realise your father has afternoon surgery? Yes, Mother. I'll take a taxi to the station. Shall I telephone for him? Oh, I already have. I'll give your love to Gran when I see her. You could have stayed with her. That big old house, she has plenty of room. Please try to understand. I'm doing what's right for me. New job, room of my own, it's what I need. And never mind us. You know how much I care about you both. But it's my life. I have to live it my own way. And London's so much more exciting than Leicester. Well, that's your fault. It needn't have been dull here. Plenty of young men asked you out. But you've shown no interest in anyone since that boy was killed. I'll write when I'm settled. If you have the time. Please, Mother. Taxi's waiting. I'll just get your back. I will write. She'll get used to it. This has been a bad winter for her. singing telegrams. Bottom of the pile. Coral, can we have some coffee? So, tell us all about yourself. I believe you're a friend of Mary's. Uh, yeah, that's right, yes. We bump into each other from time to time. Very talented girl. Very talented girl. She's going to be big. Bigger than big. Oh, I agree. Uh, she's big. Have you worked with her? Well, strangely, somehow, in terms of work, uh, we never seem to work together, um, work-wise. I know what you mean. Is that your resume you're clutching there, darling? Yes. Theatre, that's good. Some of the people we get in here have no experience at all. <laughs> really, that's incredible. Romeo and Juliet. Was that the National Ensemble? Uh, no, um, it was a small production, more more experimental, uh, avant-garde. Romeo. Juliet. Hmm. I see what you mean. Interesting. Well, Michael, the situation is this. I'm always on the lookout for new men. God knows we don't get enough men in this business. Especially of your age and experience. And I certainly would like to try you out. Well, I'd like to be tried out. But to be honest with you, and I am being honest, I really don't have anything that's suitable. I mean, there are small parts going in films, but I wouldn't feel right offering them to someone of your ability. Oh, there's, n there's no small parts, only small actors. Coral, where's that coffee? No, Bev, I feel that I really need to learn this business from the ground. Dad thinks I'm a monster. I'm afraid there's always a bit of that reaction towards a mother giving up a child, particularly from men. What do you think? 
have to give you counselling, not to make judgments. Do you have any kids? Yes, two of the little terrors. Could yours give them up? No. But I wasn't 17 with no job or prospects and no husband to stand by me. If I had been, who knows what I'd have done. Tell me what to do. I can't. All I can tell you is, be sure you make a decision you can live with. How do I know that? Trust your instincts. Women have a very strong gut feeling when they're young and concerned. I know I couldn't handle it on my own. Then your instincts are telling you you want a more secure situation for her. What if it could be the way Dad and Alice said? Sorry, Ruth. We wouldn't have a hope getting the department to grant custody to someone who has a conviction for murder and a history of family violence. I know. Why don't you let me tell them? At least that would take the heat off you for a little. No, I don't want Dad knowing it's because of Asa. Are you sure? I can put it gently. I've already given them a hard enough time without dropping that one on them. Well, think it over. You've got four weeks to make a final decision. Things might change. <laughs> It may seem like a lot of money, she said, but actually you'll be saving hundreds of dollars. And don't go before October because it's too hot. And you have to hurry and book because it's filling up fast. Oh, goodness. So will I tell her? Tell her what? Which of these dates you want to go? <laughs> you have to make up your mind, you know, or else you'll never get away. Oh, well, there's no hurry. And anyway, I can't think about dates until I've saved my pennies and... That's going to take a while. You should get a job. A job? That way you could pay for your trip to India. And you wouldn't have to wait so long. You're not sick again, I hope. No. Oh, good. I just want to see old Gus. Why? Does he owe you money? No, I just want to see him. Well, you can't. Why not? You can't because he's not here anymore. Where is he? I don't know. Has he got any family? Nope. Oh, that's why I don't know. Oh, what do they usually do with old people like Gus? They put them in a home. Okay, I'll go and see if I can find him. Uh, there are a lot of them. Homes? Uh-huh. And old people. Oh, he must owe you money. I just want to check up on what he's eating these days. Hold on. This is Sister Brisket, Ward 401. Would you have a record of Gustavus Moore? Discharged about two weeks ago. It'll save you a lot of shoe leather. I'm Rosemary Pryor, your new DON. Be warned here, I don't miss very much. You talking to me? Ah, Dr. Morrison, could I have a word with you about your accommodation? Everyone is so concerned about my welfare. No, it's not your welfare I'm concerned about, Doctor. It's the image of this hospital. Do you think it inspires confidence in our patients to see a member of the medical staff living like a tramp in the car park? I take exception to that. Nellie is a perfectly worthy vehicle. And well, she might be. But she will not be the instrument of turning the parking lot into a caravan park. Sorry, I didn't think it would bother anyone. And to tell you the truth, I'm a bit short on cash. Thought I'd save a few bucks. I do not wish to know the state of your finances, thank you. And I'd appreciate it if you'd remove your vehicle from the car park immediately after rounds. Is that negotiable? You know the rains last night? It's the points. They're wet. It won't start. Your problem, I believe. I do not wish to see your vehicle remain in the hospital car park. Understood, Doctor. Understood. Ah, Doctor. Rounds. Rounds. Have you seen my stethoscope by any chance? No, I'm sorry, Doctor, I haven't. Okay. Uh, how was Texas? Well, I was all right. Uh, yeah. Mum's a lot vaguer, but well, can't you tell me to be expected. Your father? And it won't wait until lunchtime. Adjusting. Handy at times, particularly now. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, Mr Barnett, a bit of excitement at home. Just found out I'm a grandfather. Deaf. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Dr Elliot may be preoccupied. I am not. Here, a list of mm. things to do in his absence. Sure. When once yeah. a week? What's happening? It's a febrile convulsion caused by high temperature. Right. Uh, can you do a malaria blood film, please? Absolutely. And it's not going to get down to Sydney till tomorrow. Are you going to wait for results? No, we'll start him on quinine tablets immediately. The ones we have may be out of date. Well, check! And order in IV quinine, just in case. Here we go. Are you sure okay. it's malaria? No, but it's, it's highly probable. We haven't got time to wait for the test results. Start treatment immediately. 
Vomiting. You brought the quinine up? I don't know. Quinine. Bad upon. Bad upon. Bad upon. Bad upon. Bad upon. Chris, for heaven's sake. Don't stop. It Dung won't stop. hurt for his father to hold him Dung for a moment. Don't stop. Mm. Chris, can Bad we have him back now, please? Please. He's peaceful now. I've asked Cook to organise some breakfast for you. I couldn't eat. Like father, like son, Chris turned down the offer too. Have you spoken to him? I have a way of falling short of Chris's expectations, no matter what I say. It's a difficult time for both of you. He asks nothing of me all his life, and then he comes back to me with my grandson. How do you make sense of that? What greater gift? It's one we could lose any minute. Oh, come on, Terence. He's an Elliot. He'll pull through all right. Then there's the legal situation. Could end up back in Vietnam. <laughs> Seaman holidays, I suppose. Has Ruth Forbes suggested Chris might lose the case? No. Well, yeah. We've reached turning point? Not, not quite. Keep up the six hourly blood slides. Oh, I'm sorry, Ruth, it's just been... We won't hear any more until the morning now. Mm. Will you go home now? I can't leave, Jack. Yes, you can. You said yourself his temperature is stable, and I'll ring you if there's any need. She's right, Dad. Doctor. Well, is this a conspiracy? No, it's an offer of help. I'll drive you home, eh? Uh -huh. yeah. Perfectly capable of managing that myself. OK. Thanks. Cheers. Did you get some sleep? Yeah, yeah, I did. I'm only doing this for the patients, you know. Mm. <laughs> Visitors <laughs> out, please. Some of us have work to do. Oh, isn't she a terror? <laughs> but uh, don't you let her boss you around, huh? <laughs> Never. Jack's king around here, Daddy aren't you? Wants. Come on, Grandpa. There are other patients to see. <laughs> Less of the Grandpa, thank you. This is a man still in his prime. I know, Doctor. You make a nice grandpa, though. That's our star patient this morning. Ah, he's firing on all six cylinders, aren't you, Jack? Eh? Hello, aren't grandpa. You? How's everything going with you two? Oh, really well. Yeah, it's the problem. That's a problem. <laughs> Ruth, the solicitor, has a problem with Ruth, the person, getting involved with Chris, the client. And how does Chris, the person, feel about that? Chris, the person, thinks it stinks. See you then. Bye. Problems? Sounds like it. Are you sure there's going to be someone on the desk all night? When they aren't in the wards, that's where they'll be. So she could just walk out the door with him? Sorry, I'm staying here. Oh, come on, Chris. Oh. No, 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 no. What Chris means is you'll need to keep a close eye on them. When the night staff comes on, they'll all be briefed. What I'm saying is it's just a matter and of... I will grabbing... make myself personally responsible for ensuring that Jack remains in this hospital. When you come back in the morning, your little boy will be here. And I think we should all remember that Mai is entitled to be with him. Except for the fact that she hasn't come all this way just to sit beside his bed and tell him stories, has she? This is all out of the blue. She doesn't care about him. Let's go, Chris. There are better ways of dealing with this. Okay. I'm sorry. Chris is just exhausted, that's all. Thanks for coping with all this. You know this is just the beginning. No, perhaps once we talk to her... Oh, Terence, Terence, no. Look, what we have here is a woman who wants her child so badly that somehow, miraculously, she's managed to get herself all the way here. She's not going to give up without a fight. I never thought we'd have to fight it out in court. Well, let's just hope that the magistrate has a decent meal and a good night's sleep. I thought you might like this. If you're feeling the cold. It's mine, so it's probably a little big. You know where to make tea and coffee? Mm -hmm. It's Western tea, I'm afraid. I do have green tea, but it's at home. My, I think perhaps you feel that I betrayed you. You asked me not to tell Christopher you were here. I didn't. But I had to tell Dr. Elliot. I asked you not to. 
He is Jack's doctor. He had to know, and he was in the hospital when you came. It is not right that Christopher Fathers is also Cam's doctor. He worked very hard to save Jack's... Cam's life. But how do I know what he says is true? He wants Cam's here, the same as Christopher does. My. First and most important, he wants Cam to get well. Everyone, all of us here, all we want is the best for your little boy. You must be feeling very alone. Please, don't feel you're surrounded by enemies. Oh, no enlargement of the heart. That looks like you're in good shape, Mrs. Plummer. There's no need to sound so surprised. Oh, the thing is, this isn't the first time you've had a fall, though, is it? Oh, who says? Uh, if you would, please. You know it isn't. Well, I'd like to keep... Oh, why don't you sell tickets and have the world come and gawk at me? I tell you, I am perfectly all right. Well, we don't want anyone to gawk at you, but we would appreciate it if you stayed with us here for a little while. Four hours? One hour. Done. Could you organise a room for Mrs Plummer, please, Kate? Sure. Are you thinking about... Um... You're moving her into a nursing home or something? Oh, I don't think so. She's quite fit when she isn't tripping over geese. But I worry about her living out in that rambling old house all alone like that. Maybe we should try her out on Mr Archer's beeper. He won't be needing it anymore. Poor soul. Well, that's a good idea. Well, I'd love to pop her into the Gilroy wing for a couple of weeks, though, just you to keep an eye on her. suggest that to her. I'll organise the beeper. Uh, miss and we have Mrs Plummer on board. Oh, no. No, it's all right. Harry's taking care of her. <laughs> Dr. Elliot, phone for you. It's Ruth Forbes. Ah. Ruth, hello. No, no, you've missed him again, I'm afraid. No, he's gone for a job interview. Why? Uh, well, it'll be at Camelot at 1.30. We're meeting for lunch. OK. I'll see you then. Bye. Problems? Sounds like it. After he said custody granted, I didn't hear another word. He didn't seem worried at all about the signature on the visa. Uh, where's Ruth? Here she comes. Well, as he said, the primary concern was the child's welfare. Well done, thank you. Fine. OK, so you understand that what he's granted you is an interim custody with a full hearing in four weeks' time, mm. which leaves us a small leeway in terms of Jack's visa. Ma wasn't able to prove that Jack was in moral or physical danger, so the magistrate saw no reason to change the status quo for the moment. But it bodes well, wouldn't you say? Certainly better than a 50% chance, especially given that he acknowledged that Chris had been the primary caregiver. I'll see you back at the hospital. It all depends on the case My, I'm about to go back to the hospital. Would you like to come with me? Thank you for the ride. My, if you want to phone anyone, your solicitor or friend in Vietnam. Use the phone in the staff room. Just dial one to get a line out. The solicitor told me everything. There's nothing else to know. Mai. Mai, you do understand that Christopher has custody for one month only. The court say yes to Christopher now. They'll say yes again in one month. But you still have a chance. What chance? What chance? What chance when Christopher stilled him away and the court here say, OK, OK for a child to be away from his mother, OK to tell a mother to go home and forget about your child? What mother can forget a child? Maybe in Australia, not in Vietnam. My, your son has been living with Christopher for nearly two years. Because for two years, I tried to make a new life. After Chris, I had to. Would you like to come down to the staff room? Is there anything I can do? Only tell me, how can I fight all this? I can't. What do you mean, all this? Everything. In Vietnam, maybe Khan will never get well. In our village, the hospital is nothing. One day, that will change. Oh, yes, one day. But here, my son can have everything now. Everything Chris' father says is true. It's no use. 
What did Dr. Elliot say? He, he'll need nothing. He won toys, he has toys. In school, plenty of books. He can learn English. If he is clever, easy for him to go to university. He can live well here. My son thinks he's in a dream. How can I take him back? Yes, I just lost track of time. If you don't want to go, that's fine. No, no, not at all. Terence, I didn't say anything to you at work, but I spoke to Mai this afternoon. I heard her call her solicitor. And if you expect me to congratulate you, I can't. I'm sorry. Perhaps she misunderstood you. But the point is, whether you intended to or not, you intimidated her. After she spoke to you, she felt she had absolutely nothing to offer her son. That if she wanted to keep him, she had to take on the Western world, compete on some sort of dollar-for-dollar dollar basis. I thought you put undue pressure on her. I just had to get it off my chest. Well, if I did, it was to no avail. She's going back to Vietnam. She's taking Jack with her. With Chris's blessing, he's changed his mind. Oh, I see. So, well, I'll be a grandfather by correspondence, I suppose. <laughs> Thing, though, is it? No, it certainly is not. But that child, he's the dearest little boy. In just three or four weeks, to find, to feel such love and. If it's any help, I think Christopher's done the right thing. He's obviously a very mature young man. No help from me, I'm afraid. Hey, not true. He takes after you in lots of ways. And Jack will always be your grandson. Nothing can change that. You'll just have to make sure that he remembers. Yeah, here we go. We've got uh, stationery in this one, including an English dictionary for Bungjuk. Oh, he'd be so pleased. Yeah. Oh, pens, notebooks, and all sorts of bits and pieces for and school. Everything oh, on the list wonderful. from the chemist is in this one. Uh, plenty of mosquito repellent. And the film? <laughs> oh, yeah, a black and white film for Kim An. He's a really talented photographer, can't get any film. But he will one day, huh? Mm, that's right, one yeah. day. Sorry, but we should get going. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, Terence, and thank you. I hope you come to Vietnam one day. Oh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> Not as a tourist. You're welcome at my place. Thank you. I'd like that very much. And, Rosemary, I can show you firsthand the work of the Women's Union. Maybe I can join. <laughs> mm. Now, you say goodbye to Puppy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, That's about bye, it, then. Bye. you go. Gonna help Daddy pack the car? Oh. Big jump. Whoa! <laughs> You going to see us go? Of course. Come on, Poppy. Out we go. Prior elected to council. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Never forgive me for this. Trust me, Rosie. Please be seated. Well, we're here today to celebrate the love that Rosemary and Terence have for each other and to give social recognition to their decision to accept each other totally and to share their lives. Okay. Right. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye.
special grilled corn. Oh, Ruby, you're an angel sent from heaven. <laughs> Ruby, have you got a sister? <laughs> For a couple of invalids, you do a good job of bringing car to a girl's job. Oh, if you could see me beat him in a mini Grand Prix oh, yeah. today, well, I did. You know, I've nothing into it. I'm fighting fit. Yeah, I let him win. Oh, it'll be the day. <laughs> well, I never know you two. Uh, but... There's plenty of time to pick it when you're both up and about again. Uh, <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if I can convince them that I'm well enough to go home tonight. I mean, that'll save you another trip coming to pick me up. And we all know that hospital beds are so scarce. Which is exactly the reason you should stay for one more night, Harold. I mean, they wouldn't have you in here if it wasn't absolutely necessary. No. Well, she's right, Bo. Yeah, besides, give us a chance to have a Grand Prix rematch. Uh, oh, yeah, I suppose you're right, eh? Oh, you are wonderful. What would I do with that, you It's really no trouble. Oh, Ruby, I've been thinking about your son. I may have an idea as to how we can help him. Oh, I am sorry, Ruby. I only told Rose in her capacity as vicar. I thought the church may have been able to help, you see. Sounds like she might have an idea. Yes. Oh, dear. I'm getting one of those. I'm not happy with my order. Waves. I better go and see about it. I hope you don't mind Harold saying anything. He was just trying to help. I know. If you'll tell me where Derek and his family are based, then I can ring the local church and see if they can give them some support. It's up past Kayama. Off the beaten track, actually. There are no churches out that way, I don't think. Oh, really? Well, I can make some calls anyway. Kayama, you say? Yes, that's right. Thanks for thinking of him. But we'll find a way to muddle through. We always do. Judging by that, your husband must love you very much. Yes, I think I can now say with certainty that I am number one. You're a lucky woman. <laughs> My dear, luck had very little to do with it. 